So welcome, bienvenue, uh, Mohamed Saleh Haroun, director of Lingui, the Sacred Bonds, Les Liens Sacrés. Um, Felicitations, it's so great to have you here. Thank you, I'm happy to be there. You know, I'm a little bit frustrated because uh, I love Toronto, I would like to be there, but well, you know, let's kill the pandemic first and then, uh, you know. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. We would love to have you here. But you are here with us this way. So thank, thankful for te technology today. <laughs> Mais grâce à la technologie, vous êtes avec nous aujourd'hui quand même de cette façon-là. Absolument, absolument. Et yeah, you're right. But, you know, uh, physical contact is very important, you know. Yes. But, well, let's uh, do uh, and let's, let's work with technological, technological uh, tough stuff, you know. So yeah. it's most like, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, my English is... Uh, Je suis pas content de moi, but well. I'm not happy of myself. Oh. No. Okay. Because of, of my, my English. English. Yeah. Your English is great. I'm I'm understanding. Votre <laughs> anglais est parfait, on le comprend. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so your beautiful film, your beautiful film, Lingi, um, yeah. offers, much like your other works, a story within a story. Um, and I wonder if you might you might talk to us first about what Lingi means. Uh, votre film, votre magnifique film, uh, uh, comme vos autres œuvres d'ailleurs, Lingi, uh, est une histoire dans l'histoire. Voulez-vous nous dire c'est quoi Lingi au juste? Well, Lingi in Chad means, you know, uh, the social links that people have when they belong to the same community. That means, you know, you have to help each other. If you fell down, I have to help you, to give you my hand. It's a, a kind of philosophy of uh, live it together and uh, a precept of living in the same community, sharing the same space, so we, we belong to the same, I mean, world. And we have to help each other if there is a problem. That's how, you know, in Chad, uh, we really have huge problems, but people, you know, they arrive to resolve them because you're never alone. You belong to a community. You are part of the community. And if you have a problem, sometimes we have to help you. It's just like a duty of everyone to help each other. That's the philosophy of Lingi. Mm. And in the film, of course, that comes together or it comes um, into conflict with the laws of government and the laws of religion. Um, so there is almost an underground nature to the way that these connections must work, but also they're very everyday. And so there's a way in the film where you show them as a very everyday thing, though at the same time they must be Guarded. They must be done undercover. Is that right? Uh, mais dans le film, il y a un conflit avec les lois du gouvernement, les lois de la religion, mais il y a aussi une façon de montrer des choses de la vie de tous les jours, n'est-ce pas? C'est pas ça qui est uh, retransmis ou re, uh, montré dans votre film? Oui, uh, absolument. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, daily life is very important because it's the, the place of resistance, how people, even if uh, some things are illegal or something are forbidden by the law or by religion, they try to find, you know, a way to resolve these problems and to exist, to give sense to their life because they know that it's not the right thing, you know. Oh. And uh, you have just to find your... Uh, your place, because uh, all these women in the film are a little bit rejected. They are marginalized in a way, and at least they become like uh, prey, you know, and uh, so they have to struggle by themselves and to find a place to give a sense to their life, and that's what they do. And I think that daily life is very important to show how they suffer, how they struggle, and how they try to, 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 to exist, to survive in a way, because there is a lot of violence, you know, all these forbidden laws, I mean, all these laws of 
yeah, restriction, you know, in a way of uh, freedom are very violent, you know. And so in a way they are victims, but I don't, I didn't want to show them like victims, but just like heroes, you know, trying to, to resolve problems every day. Yeah. Exactly. And that yeah. certainly comes through in the film um, in, in more ways than one, I, you know, in case people are watching this before, but they should be watching it after. Um, oui, tout à fait. <laughs> euh, et on, on, ça transparaît, ce qui transparaît dans le film, justement. Le monde va remarquer ça, ça c'est clair. Oui. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how, how did you get to the story of Amina and Maria? These, uh, these two formidable characters. Comment êtes-vous arrivé à, à, aux deux femmes, à l'histoire des deux femmes dans le film, c'est-à-dire pour ces deux personnages Well, I, I have been inspired by uh, some articles, you know, in local newspapers, and nowadays it's a common place, let's say, you know, even uh, two weeks ago, I have read an article about, you know, a uh, newborn child, you know, uh, thrown somewhere. And uh, we have all these articles every day, you know, just like young girls, they become pregnant and they know that it's forbidden. It's a shame. It's a dishonor for the family. So they have just to throw the, the, the newborn child, you know, and uh, I started thinking about that. And I started also an investigation with some women and uh, they told me that it's just like a kind of big disaster, you know. And uh, so I started thinking about that. And uh, what I wanted to show is not the, 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 the story from the point of view of the daughter, but from the point of view of the, the mother. So it's a question to all adults, you know. If you have a daughter of 15 years old, becoming pregnant and saying, I don't want to keep that. I want to make an abortion. Who are you to forbid someone to say, no, you can't decide by yourself. It's her life, you know. If we belong to the same freedom as we like to say it, you know, in a democratic way, so we cannot say to someone, no, you don't have to do that. Because if she thinks that it's the best way for her, who am I to say, no, that's not the right way for you? So I started just like that. And uh, I'm really happy about the, the result of the film because after the screening in uh, Cannes, we had a lot of a huge you know, debate on uh, social uh, medias and a lot of Women associations in Chad, you know, called me and they are just waiting for the film. And I'm flying there, you know, again next week and we will show the film for uh, a lot of people and uh, we will discuss. And I hope that, uh, you know, it will bring something, you know, it's a kind of, uh, as I say, uh, usually it's uh, making a film could just uh, be a kind of candle, you know, in mm -hmm. the darkness you know and that's what i i try to do hmm. by my films you know because cinema for us from chat couldn't be just like an entertainment it's a uh, kind of you know i'm the only one, uh filmmaker in chat so i feel myself like a spokesman in a way so i cannot just make entertainment i have to talk about serious problems you know hmm. people have to face yeah I want to come back to that, if I can. Um, Je voudrais revenir à ça, si c'est possible. Ouais. Um, how, do you, how did you cast uh, these lead characters? Comment avez-vous yeah. fait votre casting pour retrouver ces personnages? Well, it was really, you know, um, as I don't have professional actors, they are not the two... I mean, no one is professional in the film, by the way. And, uh, you know, in Chad, I don't have professional actors, so I cannot organize a big casting of 1,000 people or something like that. I don't have the budget. I don't have time. So uh, the first thing is just like my heart, my feeling, you know, and your feeling doesn't lie. You know, if you feel that this is the right person, you have to be confident with yourself, you know, sometimes and say, yeah, we will do it because it's you, because I believe that you can make it. 
And uh, that's how it happened. You know, I uh, know uh, Ashwag, the, the main character, the mother. She worked with me in Grigri. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was in a small scene in Grigri. And I found her very intelligent. And so there is something there. She has a kind of sensitive way of making things. And I said, well, maybe we'll try to make another film. And so when we start like a uh, rehearsal, I was convinced that she was the right person. And uh, the daughter, uh, Rihan, she was the only one I have seen, you know, for the casting. And uh, sometimes I believe to what I can say, invisible, you know, ways. As she is born the same day as me, I said, this is a gift. And I said, we will do it because we are brother and sister. Wow. And uh, she, is, she is excellent, you know. And sometimes, you know, art have to deal with just like invisible things. It's just a question of feeling, you know. You feel it or you don't feel it. And I felt it. And uh, we did it in this way. <laughs> Yeah. I've heard you say in other interviews something similar. Much of your filmmaking process, you, you, you attribute to love in different ways, as this is something that, that comes from, um, you know, as you said, you know, something invisible, that there is something invisible that, that drives your work. Um, yes, yeah, it has to deal with that. Yeah, because it's just like a question of, uh, yeah, if you, it's just like when you declare your fame, you know, your uh, love to someone. Uh, this person can say, no, I'm married or something like that. But if you are sincere, you know, one can feel it. Mm -hmm. And so with my actors and actresses, I used to be sincere you know i fell in love with them and they feel it and and so they give me back something it's also a question of love and then we start because we are confident to each other mm -hmm. so uh yeah this is my philosophy of uh, of uh, making films yeah it's not a question of performance it's a question of how someone can be right in what you ask to him you know so uh yeah and uh but I'm not like, I mean, you know, a lot of filmmakers, you know, they fall in love and then there is a love story between the actress and the, the, the filmmaker. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a common place, you know, I don't feel in love with them, but it's real love, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we share that for the film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, can you speak to the usage of silence and sound in the film? I'm thinking about the way that kind of sil uh, silence descends on a scene um, and that for me really called me into the character often of, of Amina. So how do you use silence and sound in films? J'ai pensé à l'utilisation du silence dans vos films et je pense que c'est une façon à vous de faire. Comment vous avez fait usage de sagement du silence dans votre film? Uh, because silence is part of the, 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 the grammar, I think, of uh, filmmaking and uh, it talks, you know, and it brings you something, information sometimes. So it's part of the process. I can't forget it. It's just like sometimes I prepare silence and it could touch people because you leave people, you know, just, I mean, you leave the audience, you give them a kind of space of understanding, you know, and being related to the character. That's very important. So I use silence as, a, yeah, as a total part of the grammar, how I, of the storytelling, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, silence is, uh, I can't make a film without silence because it's it's like in, uh, in music, you know, it's very important to keep silence. It's part of the rhythm, you know, yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I very much feel that also in the storytelling itself, the way that characters move in and out of the scenes, how you might presume a character, a minor character who is, you just coming to meet is not very important, but they are so central to 
to, to the development of that process. It's a really um, unsuspecting way, I think, that you surround your characters and your story and, and um, give attention to, to these everyday moments. Like I said earlier, it's just, it, it's quite beautiful. Oui, euh, un personnage mineur, vous avez fait de sorte à ce qu'il euh, y ait cette manière insoupçonnée d'entourer votre personnage et votre histoire et d'y prêter attention justement à chacun d'entre eux dans le film. Yes, that's very important because it becomes, it, it helps also, you know, to understand them. Just in, the, in their environment, you know, you, you show that. And this silence is part also of this own problem, you know. It's a kind of uh, introspection. I don't know if you say that in English. So it's, uh, yeah, it helps, you know. We have, everyone has this moment, you know, where you're alone. You're just thinking about things and etc. And I think that sometimes you have indicible things, you know, indicible words and... Uh, My duty and my challenge is just to show by images how we are, you know, connected to this person and we understand that she's thinking about this problem. And I think it's more important than dialogue sometimes, you know. It's very important to create a kind of, yeah, invisible link, invisible bond, you know, between uh, the audience and, 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 and the character. Yeah, that's what I try to do, yeah, always. <laughs> By indisciple, yeah. Harun means unspeakable things. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, so there's, there's something um, about the timing of this film for me. Surely you couldn't have predicted when the film would be premiering and what would be going on in the world. But, you know, with the, kind of ongoing pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, it really does bring to light these sort of connections that you need to have at the ground, right? The, the connections that you need to form with your community. Um, and so I wonder, do you, I think you've spoken to the hopes that you have for this film in Chad, but where else do you think um, this film can have impact, um, you know, across the international World. Il y a quelque chose dans le, le, le timing, le moment de ce film, de sa première, justement, de sa première diffusion, avec la pandémie qui est en cours, il met vraiment en évidence ce que vous voulez former avec votre communauté, ce que vous voulez transmettre. Et puis, je me demande, vous avez parlé des espoirs que vous avez, euh, que pensez-vous d'autre, euh, en plus de l'espoir du message transmis dans votre film Well, I think that the most important is just to uh, feel yourself not alone, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we talk also to other people, you know, uh, to other people in uh, Poland, in Morocco, in uh, even in the United States, you know, in Latin America, a lot of countries and a lot of women have to face this kind of problem. And nowadays, the fact is just there is a kind of regression, you know. People want to forbid a lot of things to women, you know. Mm -hmm. They, uh, we don't want, I mean, so, yeah, it's just like to say, hi, guys, you are not alone. We have the same problem. And I think that the film has a huge, like, uh, how echo, you know, in other countries because uh, um, it has been said, in a lot of countries, and that's the most important. That means that it has a kind of echo, yeah, in other countries, and uh, it's not only, you know, a Chadian problem, you know. And I wanted that. I wanted to, when you make a kind of struggle, you start a struggle, it's important to find yourself not alone, you know, because if not, you feel yourself isolated, and I don't think so. I think that There are a lot of people, you know, waiting maybe for this kind of just like struggle of women from Chad and to show maybe other in other places just, I mean, how they try to find a solution when they are faced to this kind of problem. And uh, I hope that it will become a kind of 
not example, but it could help, you know, other people to uh, in other places, you know, to to find their own solution. But for Chad, I am expecting a huge debate in the the parliament, you know, and I would like to just like uh, how to say uh, stop this uh, law and uh, let women just make their own choice. We don't have to uh, to say because it's a kind of patriarchal society, you know, mm -hmm. and so we are always saying to women, you should do that, you should do that, and etc. And I want just that could stop, you know, with the film. So uh, next week in Chad, there will be huge debate, I think, and a lot of polemic around the film. But this is the most important thing, how bring problems, the essential questions, you know, to the community and how to provoke, you know, a discussion about this problem. But this is very important. As long as you can discuss, you can find a way, a solution. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I have a, um, one last question that I want to ask you. It's a bit of a departure, but I, you um, are one of the, the most experienced and, and um, prolific director, Af directors from Africa that we have showing at the festival this year. But we have quite, a, quite an exciting slate of films from, from young directors who are young African directors who are following, who have studied your work and are following, you know, examples that you have set and, and re kind of um, repaving international pathways um, for cinema from their countries. Do you have any advice that you would give um, to these filmmakers or do you want to say anything that excites you about the present and the future of African cinema? Euh, J'ai une dernière question pour vous. Vous êtes l'un des réalisateurs africains prolifiques les plus expérimentés que nous avons présentés cette année. Nous avons également d'autres films de jeunes réalisateurs africains euh, et nous ouvrons des voies internationales en fait pour le cinéma. Euh, Avez-vous, si vous aviez un conseil à donner à ces jeunes, quel serait ce conseil et en particulier à ces jeunes réalisateurs qui viennent d'Afrique? Well, uh, I feel myself after your question like an ancestor you know <laughs> <That's wow. laughs> i have to give some <laughs> advice you know the most important thing to say to young filmmakers from africa is uh, believe in your dreams and don't forget that the first people the full first representation of african people in cinema has been made by the others and it was a wrong representation. So we have to give the right image of African people. And don't forget that if you don't make a film, if you don't make a high profile film, images from Africa could disappear and no one cares about that. So it's our duty to make it and to bring it as far as it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Merci, <laughs> Merci à vous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And good screening to everybody. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.